What's up everybody, this is Air Creed Harry, and today is part two of the Dome Build. But first, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Little Stinker Septic. Little Stinker Septic is a family-owned, operated business here in Trinidad, Colorado. And if you need your septic tank cleaned, or if you need a porta potty rental, call Little Stinker Septic at 719-859-5009. And on to the video. So it snowed here in Colorado, surprisingly, and uh, I couldn't get any work done. And I had to wait at least two days, which isn't too bad at all, for all of this snow to melt away. There's the pad I'm going to build on covered. Here's a view of the mountains. Here's me warming up my hands anyway here I had to come up with a system to get to the top of the air form so that I could spray it and from the parts that I had on the property here this is what I uh, came up with I put uh, two ladders together using one by two square tubing and I lashed it against the ladders there, and um, that seemed to work. So here, my uh, buddy Josh and I are finish mounting the air form. When I first mounted it, I uh, skipped a lot of holes where the screws go, just so that I could test fit it. And now that I know everything works good and inflates well, I'm adding the rest of the screws now. <clears throat> So inside the air form that I what I was just touching there was an electric heater that I placed on the inside of there. And a heater was so that I could turn it on and it could warm up the inside of the dome once I sprayed it with cement. So that I could uh heat it and cure it from the inside as well. So we're inflating the air form here just to test fit. Uh, make sure the ladder system that I have rigged up here is over the air form and not touching it. So once once we see that it is fully inflated, we then uh, proceeded to add uh, ratchet straps to the ladder to make it more secure because this system was very sketchy. Uh, until we put those ratchet straps on and uh, once we got the ratchet straps everything felt a lot more secure it was still sketchy so here Josh and, Josh and I uh, are building some sleds that we can mount on top of those square tubing there to help get us to the center of the dome so a lot of testing tightening and um, then finally we get the two boards up there so we can work from the top down. This was the biggest hurdle I had to figure out in building this dome was how to reach the top so that I could spray it with the cement mix. Here we're just uh, attaching the ladder to the bucket there keep it from moving forward and backwards side to side is uh, secured here's a view of the air form from the top of the RV <clears throat> so here uh, I have that white roofing fabric it's a polyester material and originally I was going to lay this material on the top wet it down then I was going to spray that material with a rapid set uh, rapid set cement and the problem is the cement cures so quickly that uh, even with uh, retarders in there to slow down the curing it was still too quick for the method that I wanted to use which was to um, spray a thin coat of that rapid set cement on this fabric so anyway I had to abandon that plan 
So here's the setup I was going to use to pump my Epic Mix. You see that white PVC pipe that was going to the pump from a holding tank that I made there. Uh, unfortunately, I needed to change the gasket seals on that pump so it didn't work out. Here's the shotcrete nozzle. And here's the uh, pump I ended up using for this job. So I uh, had to make all my mixes in the 50 gallon barrel you see here. I uh, pre-mixed it so that I could get every mix exactly the same. And once I finished mixing it in the barrel, I then transferred it to the hopper, the cement pump hopper. And you can see I'm filling it with the Epic Mix now. Here I'm starting the air compressor. This is a Harbor Freight air compressor I'm using. Normally you would want to use one of those tow behind compressors, but this is what I had. And this is the shotcrete nozzle. Here's a half inch uh, air hose that I got. And um, this is to allow maximum air to come through. Yeah, I'm turning the air valve off on there, turning the air pressure on. And now I'm going to test out that the air is coming out of the shotcrete nozzle by opening the valve here. So you can see I already have a very light coating of cement on the entire air form that we did earlier in the day. So I allowed that to set and the purpose of that was to give uh, the mix something to stick to because if I sprayed it on too heavy on the Tyvek material it would just slide off. So in order to get it to work and to stick I had to start with very light coats on the air form first, let that cure enough to then start the second coat and um, you can see here there are times that I'm uh, spraying the air form that you can see the white show from underneath because the pressure is blasting the foam, uh, the cement away. Here's the delivery I was waiting for, came while we were in the middle of spraying. There's a special package I've been waiting for. The box was all tore up, but I looked inside and everything seemed good, so I signed it and off the delivery guy went. Now back to the dome. Um, that's the first coating you see, and you can see some white showing through, the spots of white. That's just to show what a very light coating I did uh, uh, at first. And even this coating, you can see it's really light. I'd say it's like maybe 1 16th, 1 8th inch tops, but uh, I'm pretty much going for 1 16th of an inch. Very light coating. And uh, after this coat, uh, it would be strong enough and have enough texture to hold on to the next coats that can go on heavier. There, if you saw that, anytime you see white, that's the uh, Tyvek air form underneath it. There's a second coating being sprayed onto the top of the dome. So I let that set for about three to four hours and then I went back and did the next coating. And by then it was uh, set up enough that it wouldn't run off. So here Mrs. Aircree is helping with uh, the whole project. Although you don't see her in the videos much, uh, she's there the entire time helping me and every step of the way, including carrying heavy 94-pound bags of cement.
Mrs. Air Cree ain't no joke. So here my buddy Dan and I, we're uh, actually uh, starting to clean the pump. We're cleaning it uh, because we're letting what well, I sprayed set before we do the next round. Oh, and here's the package that came, the delivery. This is a future uh, tool Mrs. Aircree and I will be using to build some tire structures. And uh, I got a future video of this machine coming out. And um, I'm looking forward to the next project, which is going to be uh, a structure made of tires. And I have some real cool things coming with that. So here you can see uh, basalt mesh. Uh, I only had one roll, so I used all I had. I did a cross pattern on the top of the dome, and I wrapped it around the perimeter on the bottom part. You can see the first four feet here are covered in mesh. And then this goes up and over to the other opposite side. And um, then the next part is going to be to embed this mesh. So I'm going to shotcrete it with the Epic Mix and embed that mesh under the cement mix. Here's a close up. And also having that mesh there helps for the Epic Mix to uh, cling on even better. It gives it more texture and more places to hold on. So after this coating, I started really laying it on heavy. Because in the end, uh, the wall thickness of this dome will be approximately 6 to 8 inches. The structural layers that I've been applying are about one and a half to two inches of a strong epic mix. Uh, it's actually a different mix than I showed in the recipe or in my video. And um, I'm just uh, adjusting it on the fly and uh, that mix seemed to work really good that I made here for my uh, structural layer. And um, the next layers you won't see in this video but they're going to be the insulative layers and they're going to go on two to three inches thick at a time well anyway that's uh, part two of my dome build uh, I want to thank all my uh, fans my subscribers please uh, share and like this video uh, I'm showing a way to build inexpensively and uh, quickly uh, all in all if uh, there were no delays the whole job would take you approximately seven to ten days to complete uh, one person alone so also I wanna thank my uh, patreon members I don't have many and the ones that I have thank you very much and I like to ask everyone else to please um, Join my Patreon helps me out tremendously to continue these types of projects to share with you. And um, so please donate to the link below. We would be so very grateful to you. Thank you for your love and great comments. Each comment counts. We love you all. Please stay tuned for part three. Peace.